Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be painting one of the tags from Corvus Belli's skirmish game Infinity. In one of my earlier Infinity videos, I have mentioned that seeing this tag during a trip to Austin, Texas is what made me start collecting and painting Infinity minis. Before tackling it, I wanted to be sure that I know what I'm doing though, so I painted another using miniature with the same yellow gold color scheme. You can check out the video in the right corner if you haven't seen it yet. Before I started the painting process, I built this workflow in my head, which went something like this. Paint the yellow armor first, that is the highlight of the model, and if it doesn't look good, the whole thing goes down the drain. Next is the non-metallic metal parts. They don't seem as prominent as the yellow armor, but actually there is a lot of them, and they are the second most important part of the model. Do the base next, and leave the sword to the end, since it can be treated as a completely separate piece. Don't do the freehand markings and insignia since you will mess it up and ruin the nice paint job. I managed to stick to this plan throughout the painting process quite well, except the freehand parts and you will see how that's gonna turn out in the end. The yellow armor is essentially a type of non-metallic gold, but without achieving the full brightness in the highlight areas. So as usual with non-metallic metal, I started from a black primer and highlighted it up from there with whole reds, scrupulous brown and ice yellow until I reached the lightest point. I went back and forth on this process quite a bit, adjusting the lights and smoothing out the gradients, but what I learned from this project is two things. Usually I tend to go for big value jumps between colors when I do non-metallic metal and then rely on glazing to smooth out the differences. For example, I would use something like scrupulous brown and then a mix of scrupulous brown with ice yellow and finally pure ice yellow. This time I mixed in the highlight colors gradually, in many small steps as I was painting the highlights, adding more and more ice yellow to the scrofless brown along the way. This might sound very fiddly and time consuming, but it actually made the process faster since there was way less glazing over the gradients needed and the end result looks much smoother than usual, in my opinion at least. I also changed the way I applied the first layer of new highlights. I usually just add the new layer at my normal glaze consistency, which creates a visible line between the old and the new color, and once again I rely on additional glazes later on to smooth out the gradient. This time I started with a much thinner glaze initially, which barely made a mark, built it up gradually on a smaller and smaller surface, and then switched to a slightly thicker glaze along the way when I was already working on most of the new color to achieve full coverage. This once again sounds more work than before, but ended up being quicker since it didn't require a lot of additional work later to look decent. The moral of the story is that it's better to put in the effort initially rather than relying on correcting your mistakes later. I wanted to do something reliable here, so I used my trusty Scale 75 non-metallic steel recipe with one alteration. Looking back at my previous models, I noticed that the metals I painted don't seem shiny enough to really sell the metal effect. The trick to really make something look metallic is to create big jumps in contrast, and I felt that I am afraid to really go all the way up to white, so this time I tried to remedy that.
I think there is still a lot of room to improve, but overall this looks way more metallic than my previous attempts. I have to admit, I didn't have a plan going into this one. I had a vague idea about something that looks a bit like Raid Bone, the stuff Elder use in 40k, and that I wanted to have something emerald since that would go well with the yellow armor, so I was basically making it up as I went along. It would have been probably a better idea to have a solid plan for the colors, but it came out okay, I guess. The military orders tag rack he is standing on was at least super straightforward to paint. I simply used my trusty blue recipe of Prussian blues mixed with ice yellow for highlights. I honestly don't know why I started doing this. I don't usually do freehand and it was not in the plan to do it, but it just looked so awesome on the box art. Since it wasn't planned, I didn't put much thought into the execution either, except that I would start out with a faint outline that I can easily correct or even completely paint over if it looks terrible. So I used a very thin glaze to paint the outlines of the shapes and then filled them in later when I was mostly satisfied with the result.
some of it is a bit wonky if you look too closely, especially the numbers, but I think they add quite a bit of visual interest to the armor. And for a first attempt at free hands, I think it doesn't look half bad. For this one, I actually had a plan. I wanted to go for a cool magenta colored energy effect that would go well with the color scheme of the model. No super fancy secondary reflections, just a gradient from blood red to white on the opposing side of the swords and strong edge highlights, but I think it looks pretty cool. And the end result looks like this. The box art looks better, but I am pretty satisfied with what I achieved and I learned a lot from it that I can apply for future projects. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.